Hello and welcome to chapter three, workout problem video. So in this video, we're gonna go over chapter three, workout problems one through six, dealing with supply and demand. So the very first problem is about the market for gasoline. So here on this graph, we see the supply curve and the demand curve for gasoline. The question that it poses, the very first question that it says is suppose that the price of gasoline is a dollar so that's that's an assumption that we're making okay so here's a dollar right here right so this is price on the vertical axis and so we're assuming that price is a dollar so as we draw price across our uh, graph with a horizontal line we can kind of connect the dots for demand and supply typically we would see the price actually coming to equilibrium, which is right here that I just circled. So that's equilibrium. But uh, if, say for example, we had a price ceiling that wouldn't allow prices to go above a dollar, then the red dotted line then would be our actual price in the market. So the next question is, is will the quantity demanded be lower or higher than at the equilibrium price of $1.40. So again, this right here, right, that's our equilibrium. This is the dollar price that we're assuming it prevails in the market. And so we're looking at demand in this situation. So demand is right here, right? And we're looking specifically at quantity demanded. So is the quantity gonna be lower or higher than the equilibrium quantity? So we draw our dotted line down here to the horizontal line and we're right at about at 800. That's where we're at, at a dollar. At equilibrium, we see the, the blue line that comes down here, right, right there, and that's 600. So we are definitely, let me reverse this. So the answer actually is higher, right? So equilibrium's at 600, we're higher, we're at 800, um, and that's, the next question, will the quantity supplied be lower or higher? So let's draw this out again. Hopefully I do better than, than my explanation of demand, right? And so supply is here, right? This is the supply curve. And so we look at our quantity supplied and we're right at 500. Quantity supplied and quantity demanded at equilibrium are the same, right? So that they're, that's kind of the definition of the equilibrium, right? Where everything comes together. The quantity quantities are the same of supply and demand at equilibrium. So we, we know from our demand situation that it was 600. And so we are actually lower than equilibrium. Okay, so lower in this case for supply and for demand it was higher. Next question, is there a shortage or a surplus in the market? If so, by how much? So we see right here on our graph that the excess demand is a shortage. So do we have the same situation as we go down to a dollar? And the answer is yes. We have more excess demand. So we, yes, we do have a shortage. And this is how big the shortage is, right? So we look at demand right here at 800. In this case, we don't actually look at, look at the equilibrium. We actually go right to supply here that is 500 and then we compare the two so what is the distance between supply and demand in this situation it is 800 is demand demand and 500 is the quantity supplied right so we need to talk about in quantity quantity demanded right this is quantity demanded and quantity supplied and the difference of course is 300 so that is our shortage. Let's go ahead and go on to problem number two. So in problem number two, the, the setup is this. So we're, the following table shows information on the demand and supply for bicycles, where the quantities of bicycles are measured in thousands. So what is the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied at a price of $210 per bicycle, right? That's the per bicycle price, $210. We can just look right over here. The quantity demanded is 28 thousand right because it's in thousands and the quantity supplied is 56,000 so that's a B at what price is the quantity supplied equal to 48,000 and all we have to do is go up to the next row right so this right here is quantity supplied that's where it's 48,000 
So at what price is that? Well, we look all the way over this way, and that's at a price of $180. Now for problem 2C. We have to graph the demand and supply curves for the bi bicycles. So in order to do this, I went ahead and I labeled uh, the axes. So the vertical axis or the y axis is price. So I labeled that price and I went ahead and put some uh, some numbers on there, 100 at the bottom, 250 at the top. And then I and then I put the quantity on the x axis from 30 to 70 and uh, let's go ahead and draw out the supply curve first. So let's do the supply curve here. So the the graph's going to look something like this, the supply curve. Okay, that's an S there for supply. And then I'm gonna switch, uh, let's switch colors here to green, and then I'm gonna do demand. So the trick with demand is I'm actually going to have to make sure my equilibrium, we can see it on the graph here, I'm circling in green, right? This is the equilibrium point is 150. 150 uh, and the price is equilibrium and it's gonna, it's gonna they're gonna cross at this point. And so my demand curve is gonna look something like this. Let's go. there we go. And that's demand there. So that's that's kind of what they look like. You can you can graph the points out, make it better than my graph, uh, you know, do better than the instructor on this one. So the next the next uh, question is is how can you determine the equilibrium price and quantity from the graph? So well it's where they cross, right? And so let's go ahead and change colors here change to purple so right here where the purple circle is that's equilibrium right right where they cross so we're gonna go ahead and uh, take that uh, cross point and we're gonna draw dotted lines to our axes and that uh, is gonna be where the uh, the equilibrium quantity and equilibrium price are going to be found 150 and 40 right the next question is, is, how can you determine the equilibrium price and quantity from the table? Well, we look over the table. I just circled it in, in green, right? And I'm gonna put purple on it here too. So it's where quantity supplied and quantity demand are equal. That's gonna be our equilibrium price there. And then what are the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity, right? 40 is our quantity, $150 is our price. Okay, problem 2D. If the price was 120, what would the quantities demanded and supplied be? Well, that's pretty pretty easy, right? We just go right here uh, to 120. Quantity demand is 50,000. Quantity supplied is 36,000. Would a shortage or a surplus exist at this price point? So we have 50 demand, right? 50,000 demanded. How many are supplied? Only 36. So we have more demanded, more people want them than, than are supplied. So we're gonna end up with a shortage. We're gonna end up with a shortage of 14,000. Okay, now we're on to problem three. So it says here the computer market in recent years has been, or has seen many more computers sell at much lower cost, much lower price, I'm sorry, not cost. What shift in demand or supply is most likely to explain the outcome? And then we're supposed to sketch a demand and supply diagram and explain your reasoning. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and draw this. Uh, and it doesn't matter what the really what the exact dimensions are of our supply and demand. We're just gonna do a a rough drawing of what supply and demand looks like and what the reaction is is we shift. Okay, so that's supply, that's demand. So, we're, we're, and we're supposed to sketch a demand and, and, and then show our reasoning. So let's talk about demand first. So as we sketch our original, this is our original supply and demand curve before any shift happened to show maybe uh, what the force was that impacted and how it was impacted, either supply or demand. So, so this is our equilibrium, right? Right here, this is our original equilibrium in blue. So this is, this is the right the original price and this is the whoop, the original quantity and so now what we what needs to happen is we need to have many more computers 
So what happens to quantity? Quantity has to go this direction, right? It has to increase. So our equilibrium has to go this direction, horizontally. It has to go to the right to have many more computers sell at much lower prices. So now we're talking about lower prices. So now what does our price have to do? It has to go down, right? So our equilibrium has to go this direction as well, okay? So does that make sense? That's kind of where we're headed with this. So whatever scenario we come up with as we shift, then we have to uh, kind of test out and say, okay, what does that do to equilibrium? Does that meet our needs for this scenario? So let's first do uh, demand. So we're gonna do demand. So what if demand increases, shifts to the right? This is what it's gonna look like, right? This is our new demand curve, right? D1, we'll call it. And it'll come across and the new equilibrium will be right where I circled in green on the red. Okay, because supply is not shifting at the same time. We're only doing demand. So what does that do? Well, that definitely increases price, which is wrong, right? That's not what we want. We don't want an increase in price. It does increase quantity, which is good. That's exactly what we want. So this shift isn't gonna work for us. Let's try a decrease in demand. So where sh demand shifts to the left, this direction, right? Okay, so then let's draw our dotted line here to kind of give an example of this is what D2 would what D2 would look like and equilibrium would be here. Price is now falling, that's good. Quantity decreasing, that is not good. We don't want that. So neither one of the demands actually work out for us. So what are we gonna have to do? We're, we'll go on and look at the supplies and see if we can get something to work out there. So now let's get the red back on here and do supply. So okay, so what's what, what if supply, and we can kind of see what happens here, right, as we draw this out. So let's say supply, okay, so let's say supply decreases. So you're, then you're gonna have a supply curve that looks like this on this side, right? Equilibrium here not gonna work, right? So that, that increases price, which is not what we want, right? And, but, but it does, well, now, now it also de decreases quantity, which is not what we want. So that's doing exactly the wrong thing. What we really want is we really want supply to be over this direction, right? We want it to, supply to shift to uh, the right, which is actually an increase in supply. Okay, so here's an increase in supply. Equilibrium would end up over here, which means quantity would rise and price would fall. So that's that's our uh, answer is right C right here, right? Rise in supply uh, would give us the scenario there, and that, that's kind of how you sketch it out and make it look. You don't have to do all of them. You can just do, for example, just the rise in supply and graph that rise out from the original equilibrium, and that would... Give me an idea that you have an idea um, of what you're doing there. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, continue with problem four. So in this one, we have a demand and supply market for cheddar cheese, and, and it's illustrated in the, the schedule or the table below. So we've got it lined out there. The very first thing that we have to do is we have to graph the data and find the equilibrium. Okay, so even before we graph the data, we can find the equilibrium if we look in the table, right? So it's, it's pretty straightforward. We can see the equilibrium right as quantity demand and quantity supplied are equal, right? So here at a price of $3.40. Okay, so let's go ahead and graph it out though. It's gonna look something like this. And you can do this as you, as you graph each point or each data set onto the graph. So we're gonna have price, we're gonna have quantity, right? And you can probably do it a lot quicker than I can. So we can say maybe $3 here, and we're gonna have $4 up there. We don't necessarily have to draw it to scale, but we're just gonna get it laid out here. So our $3 is something like, uh, and we're, then we'll have uh, $3.50 here. And so everything in between there. And then our quantity is gonna range from, we'll say 500, 600. Maybe this is just a sample part of the actual complete graph. It's gonna look a little different than what we have. 
Uh, and then here's 700. Okay. So now, now as we do the, as we do the supply and demand, it's going to look something like this, right? So we're going to we're going to do the supply is going to going to go up this way. There's supply. Demand is going to come down this way, right? And we're going to have demand there, and then we can see that the equilibrium will be boom right about well I should have scooted it over a little bit right about 650 on the quantity and it's going to be about 340 on the price okay that's where it should be as you as you graph it out so graph out each individual point as you do that Okay, the next part of problem four continued, it says, next create a table showing the change in quantity demanded or quantity supplied and a graph of the new equilibrium in each of the following situations. So you can go ahead and use your uh, graph or your uh, demand and supply curve that you just created right at the beginning of, of problem four and you can graph on top of it these uh, changes if you want to or you can create new ones for the, these shifts so these are shifters that are happening right either to the to supply or demand so what we're gonna do here is uh, with, with the very first one is we're gonna have it says the price of milk the key input of cheese production rises so that the supply decreases by 80 pounds at every price Okay, so how, how can we visualize that? Well, let's let's look back at the table. Okay, so we're gonna look back at the table that we were used to draw the original supply and demand curves and find the original equilibrium. And we're going to look at the supply decreases uh, of 80 pounds at every price. Okay, so here's supply, this is what we're looking at this time. And at every price, so $3 is the first price, all the way down to $4, right? So all these price points, the quantity supplied is going to decrease by 80. Okay, so that means that 540 quantity supplied then becomes 460. Right? Does that make sense? So for each one of these, air, all the quantities supplied are going to be reduced by negative 80. Okay? So you're going to do the, the math on all of those and come up with new points for quantity supplied. All right, so I've got the original supply and demand curve graphed out here. And our original equilibrium will be right in the purple spot here. Okay, at 650, that's in purple, and 340 was the original equilibrium from the original graph. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw our supply curve that is going to reduce, be reduced by a quantity of 80 at every price point. Okay, so at the, all the price points up here, it's gonna be reduced by 80, right? All the price points down here below the equilibrium it's also going to be reduced by 80. So what we're going to come up with we're, we're going to have a new and I'm going to draw a dotted line here. This is our new supply curve. We'll call it S1. So because of the change in uh, the milk price right that changes our supply of cheese. Okay, so there's our supply and it's shifting, so that's what our new one is. Okay, so the next one is, is it says a new study says that eating cheese is good for your health so that demand increases by 20% at every price. Again, we're gonna go back to our data and we're gonna calculate this in and we're gonna use green. So what that'll look like is at every price, we're gonna have 20% more uh, demand. So what that looks like, uh, and I'll do this calculation again, but just to show you. So one, one equals 100%, right? So one is 100%. Point one, oh, what, actually we'll say point two in this case, equals 20%, right? So to get 100 and 
so to get 20% more of like say this first quantity demanded of 750, we have to first multiply it by one, right? That gives us the original 750 and then multiply it by 0.2. So let's, so what we really want is we want 120% of the original, right? What it is, 100% plus 20%. So that's gonna be 1.2. So for each of these quantity demanded, we're going to multiply them by 1.2 and that's going to give us the amounts, the new quantity demanded amounts for a 20% increase. So go ahead and multiply them out, 1.2, multiply that by every single quantity demanded. And when you get your data, then what you're gonna do is you're going to graph the data then on this line. It's gonna look something like this, right? So our demand is here, right, in green, and so every point on the demand curve then is going to shift this direction. It's going to shift to the right is an increase in demand. 20% increase in demand, whatever your numbers are, that's how much it's gonna shift, okay? So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and do a dotted line here, straight as possible, okay? And then uh, this new dotted line is gonna be called D1. So that's gonna be the new equilibrium, right? So uh, actually for each one of these, what we have to do now is we have to look, after we graph each one, we really need to be looking at what the new equilibrium is gonna be. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the first one. We'll use yellow. The new equi equilibrium with supply, okay? So this right here, as, as our new dotted line crosses the original demand, that's our new equilibrium for supply. With a new equilibrium price, if we draw the dotted line out here, right? And new equilibrium quantity. So now as our demand shifts, we look at the original supply, right? So we're taking this, each scenario, we're gonna say we're setting back to the original demand and supply, and then we're gonna go ahead and shift. So demand, before we shift demand, we're switching back to this purple uh, equilibrium, right? The original equilibrium. And now we're going to shift to the right and up, right, with our equilibrium to the new equilibrium uh, at this point right here. And then we can see that our uh, price is going up and our quantity is also rising with the shift in demand. Now we're on to problem five. So supply and demand for movie tickets in a city is shown in the following table. So we have uh, quantity demanded and quantity supplied at given prices for tickets uh, to the movie. So now what we have to do is we have to graph demand and supply and identify the equilibrium. Okay, so we just did this, right? So we should be able to do this pretty quick. So this over here is price. This is quantity. Quantity. Okay, graph and identify the equilibrium. Equilibrium is gonna be in blue, right about here. And so if we drew this out to scale, yours probably will be better than mine, but equilibrium actually should be right here at $8. So that's not even close. I didn't even get close. So it should be up here, right? So it should be at $8, and the quantity should be at 21. That's where it should be. Okay, $8 is our equilibrium price, 21 is our equilibrium quantity. Okay, so now we're moving on to some shifting that we're gonna be doing here. So then we're gonna calculate in a table and graph the effect of the following two changes. So three new nightclubs open. They offer decent bands and have no cover charge, but make their money by selling food and drink. As a result, demand for movie tickets falls by six units at every price. And that's demand, right? That we're gonna be doing this with. So demand is what we're gonna be fiddling with. So we're gonna come over here and look at demand. It's gonna fall by six units. So this one's gonna be 20, right? This one now is gonna be 18. This one now is gonna be 16, right? This one now is gonna be 15. And this one now is gonna be 14. So that is the new quantity demanded at, at these prices. Only quantity demanded is affected. Not supply, not price. So we're gonna go ahead and, and shift this back. So let's pull up green here. 
So, and you can actually put the real uh, points on your graph, right? So as we go down through here, it's gonna be boom, 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 something look like that, right? So this is the D, uh, we'll call it D1, this is DO, right, the original. And so now our new equilibrium is gonna be here, right, and we can actually graph that out and show the impact. We can also see the equilibrium with this new demand is gonna be somewhere right around here, right, 18 and 18. Okay, so now let's look at the next one. It says the city eliminates a tax that it had been placing on a local entertainment business. The result is that the quantity supplied of movies at any given price increases by 10%. So now we're gonna do quantity supply increase. Let's, let's, get, a, let's get our new color here. We'll do this in red. So quantity supplied is gonna increase by 10%. Uh, we can do this the same way we did it in the last one. So we're gonna do 1.1, right? 0.1 is our 10%, one is our original uh, amount. And then whatever the result of that is, that is going to be our new quantity supply. Another way to look, look at the 1.1 is in, whoops. In uh, decimal places, the 1.1, is actually like 110%, right? Okay, because one is 100%, right? One equals 100%, okay? So you multiply anything by one and it gives you 100% of whatever you multiply it by, right? Uh, point one equals 10% right, in decimal format. So you add them together and you get 1.1 equals 110%, right? Does that make sense? So if you wanna increase what you have by 10%, you multiply it by 1.1. Now we got all these new points. If you multiply all these out, you're gonna have the new points for quantity supplied. Go ahead and multiply them out and get, get that set. And then what you're gonna have here is on this graph, is you're gonna have an increase in supply this direction, right? And the new supply, I'll dot it, make it dotted, S1, and then the new, the new uh, equilibrium is gonna be on this side, quantity, new equilibrium quantity is gonna be down here in between 20, 25, somewhere maybe, and price is gonna be over this direction. Problem six, a low income country decides to set a price ceiling on bread so they can make sure that bread is affordable to the poor, which is, so the conditions of demand and supply are given in the table below. So here it is. So this, if the price ceiling was not in place, this is equilibrium, right, right here. But we have a price ceiling, so let's take a look at what it is. What are the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity before the price ceiling? So we just answered that right here. At a price of $2.80, it's 7,500 uh, loaves of bread, right? Or whatever it is. Okay, what will, the, what will the excess demand or shortage, that is quantity demanded minus quantity supplied, right? So if we have, we have our quantity demanded minus our quantity supply, then that will give us the uh, the shortage, okay? If the price ceiling is at 240, if it's at $2, and if it's at 360. So let's go ahead and, and get it get it going here. So uh, let's say the price ceiling is set at 240. So here we go. So quantity demanded minus quantity supplied. So it's gonna be the difference between these two, which is uh, $1,600, right? There we go, that's the difference. So really what's happening with the price ceiling is the price wants to go this direction. It wants to end up and be happy. It's gonna be happy at $2.80, right? But the price ceiling, if we set it at 240, it's not gonna let it get there. So so it's good. there's gonna be a shortage. Shortage at that point of $1,600, $2.00, the shortage is going to be, uh, let's see, it's gonna be 3,000, right? The difference between these two, right? So quantity demanded minus quantity supplied. So we got a shortage there as well. And what if what if it bumps all the way up to $3.60? This really is not a price ceiling that's effective, 
right? It's not keeping bread down. Equilibrium's way below that, right? So if we do 6,500 minus 11,000, we actually don't end up with a shortage. There is zero shortage in that case. We actually end up with a surplus, a surplus of 4,500, right? That's what it's gonna be, 4,500 surplus. So, so hopefully this helps you. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me or call me and I will get back to you as soon as I can.